Hello, pipe smokers. How are you? Hmm. Yep. Good morning to all of you. <clears throat> or, or I could do it a, another way. Hello there. How y'all doing? It's my Jay impersonation too. I like doing impersonations. <laughs> um, just some things I want to talk about before uh, I get into what I'd like to talk about. I'm kind of inspired by matches eight six zero. You know, watching his videos, <clears throat> there's something about Matches 860. You can sit there and just play one of those videos, and it has, uh, he's such a wonderful storyteller. Uh, that's what I love about his videos. He just uh, sits there with his pipe, and he just starts talking about, you know, things in his life, and, and I find it extremely interesting and also very just a uh, kind of a very calming influence you know so sometimes if I'm kind of agitated or I'm kind of nervous about things or I have a lot of anxiety and then see John's put up a new video <clears throat> I'll go oh I'm gonna check this out and I'll usually like get a cup of coffee I might even get a pipe and just sit there and just listen to a story wonderful well okay um, uh, this is part two of which pipe and which pipe tobacco this is for you Dunhill Man UK uh, my answer because I, I kind of uh, left we left all of you with a cliffhanger a couple days ago and I did that intentionally so I, you'd watch <laughs> at least watch this one mm. well if you watch the first video <clears throat> you probably now know my selection um, again I had a Dunhill cherry wood, which I, I absolutely love. Uh, I have a, a Joby pipe, which was a very, very uh, uh, comforting pipe when I was going through some really uh, tough times. And finally, I have this beautiful replica of a Basil Rathbone Sherlock Holmes Peterson with the infamous P-lip. <laughs> and I had this Bari which I had purchased when I was in Minnesota about 20 years ago, 18 years ago. Mm. I think that name of that, I mean, it was, called, was it called the Briarleaf <clears throat> in, uh, in Rochester? I think it was called the Briarleaf or, or a new leaf or something like that. Anyway, dear friends, uh, I chose this pipe and this, now, many of you know I'm a big Pirate Cake fan. I really am. I mean, Pirate Cake is wonderful. But a dear, dear friend <clears throat> sent me something that I cannot get here in the United States. And it's called Holland House. <clears throat> well, I can probably order it online from somewhere. I, I've been looking, and I, it's kind of hard. It's very rare. But Holland House, if I, if I, if I, if I had to choose this... And this, I would be very satisfied. The reason why, and this is a Black Cavendish, this reminds me so much of the very first time when my brother would come home and he would bring his pipe and his pipe tobacco and they'd be in his little attache case or his uh, briefcase. And I remember would, I'd sneak into and open up the briefcase and I was just intrigued by pipes. But the, what, what really got me was this. That wonderful heavenly aroma of this beautiful dark black Cavendish, and it just took me back uh, to my childhood. So if I could have cases of this along with my wonderful pipe and some pipe cleaners, these are the two choices that I would most be most satisfied with. So there's the answer there, <clears throat> Mr. Dunhill Man UK. I hope uh, hope you like it. Now I'm going to go on and talk about some things that I'd like to talk about. Um. One of the things that I wanted to talk about, <clears throat> I mean, I know a lot of us are starting to do the juice thing. By the way, this is a uh, caffeine juice. It's okay. I know some juice diets say you shouldn't have caffeine, but hey, to heck with them. <laughs> um, one of the things that I, I, start, I started around Lent time 
and I and I've pretty much done it well up until the last three weeks. I've been on vacation for the last two weeks and then I've been back this week. I started eating what I call uh, half meals, and I affectionately said trying to find the meal in the spoonful was kind of like my Lenten, you know, overarching principle. You know, not trying to pig out and gorge myself because I just love food. I'm sure you can tell. <laughs> I'm pretty corpulent. Um, and when I did the <clears throat> juice fast last uh, summer, started July 1, I did it for 58 days. I tried to do 60, but I just, you know, after 58 days, I said to heck with it. I didn't see a lot of results after the probably the 45th day, so it just seemed like it wasn't going anywhere. So anyway, but uh, but I lost from, I went up, I started at 270 and uh, got down to 235 and I was very happy about that now my goal at the end of this year is to be under 200 pounds and I was I got down to about 225 before I went on vacation that's all I'm gonna say so I've, I'm having to rededicate myself to eating only half meals again and and juicing and also exercise and I'm, I've been hit and miss on the exercise more hit than miss but uh <clears throat> there's been a few days where i just said i'm not going to do it and uh i need to uh, rededicate myself to my goal because i only have six months left and i think it's reasonable to think i can lose 30 pounds in six months if i'm if i'm really uh serious and i can do that but i find that <clears throat> you know eating half meals for the most part i had it just a minute ago i had a half a sandwich with no condiments and a cup of coffee i really enjoy uh my meals with coffee um i you know i used to like milk and soda but there's something really delicious about a mouthful of a good food and followed by followed by a nice shot of coffee i don't know what that is but i really like it and there's no sugar i don't put sugar in my coffee i've never been a sugar person i do a little bit of cream but no no sugar so Anyway, I just wanted to share that, throw that out there for those of you who are, you know, kind of conscious of your weight and stuff. <clears throat> because this leads me to what I really want to talk about real quick. And that is altered reality. I was, uh, <clears throat> had the audio book, Steve Jobs' uh, biography. And one of the things they talked about over and over again is he had this ability to kind of warp reality. Uh, he had an, he, he lived in many ways in an altered reality. He tried to alter reality to fit his, his dreams, his, his goals. And I, when I heard that, I said, you know, I, I do a lot of that and it's got me into a lot of trouble. <laughs> now, in some ways it's actually been a good thing. And then, then the, in the, the autobiographer was his name, Isaacson, uh, I mean the biographer, not autobiographer, but the biographer. Uh, <clears throat> he basically said that, you know, obviously he became Steve Jobs because he had this ability to see reality in kind of an altered state and then try to live as if it really was that way. Now, you might just say, well, that's just following your dream, following your bliss, you know, and there's nothing wrong with that. Until... <laughs> your sense of reality meets real reality. <laughs> you know, you might want to play like your Spider-Man and jump off the Empire State Building. And you might believe that it can work. But then when you step off that ledge, trying to swing on, you know, spider strands that aren't really there, you're going to get depressed real fast. You're going to have a real crushing experience, let me just tell you. Anyway, um, <clears throat> um, so, you know, I started thinking about that. And one of the things I noticed just recently is this. Okay. When I look in the mirror, I see more hair right here, especially. It's like, I see, I see lots of hair here in the mirror. But when I look at it on video and I go, where'd all that hair go? And I want to even really show you the back because the back's even worse. <laughs> but it's an altered sense of reality. You know, I see myself as still having a full head of hair, you know, when I look in the mirror. But it's an altered perception.
And, um... This is a really delicious, flavorful tobacco. I love it. Holland House. I remember as a child, I had some pretty weird ideas. And they, were, they weren't they were bad, I think. They weren't bad things at all, but they were just impractical. Uh, I got into model railroading when I was like 13, 14. And we lived in a upstairs apartment. It was a small little place. But I, I decided I was going to have this large in-gauge model railroad. And I went out and bought lumber, <laughs> carried it all the way home from the lumber, lumber place, along with sheets of plywood. And I built a huge uh, structure in my mom's living room. Now, I was so sensitive, I put it on caster so she could move it around and vacuum under it. I thought that was pretty sensitive of me to do that. But this thing was going to be a place where I could actually sit down underneath it after it's all been built with the plywood and the paneling and the, you know, and the, you know, and it was in a, I mean, we're talking a really substantial structure. Uh, I learned carpentry at a young age, so, you know, I, I could do a lot of that stuff. Well, my mom for about two weeks kind of went along with this, but finally she says, you can't keep that thing in there. You got to get rid of it. It's too big. I mean, it took up half the living room. Granted, it was a small living room, but for us, it took up half the living room. I didn't see a problem with it. <laughs> but, you know, because I thought, well, this is what I want to do, it was an altered sense of reality. I'm going to impose my reality upon others. You ever do that? <laughs> Good luck. Um... I remember trying to get a dog. Again, living in the same apartment, we were not allowed to have pets. And somebody gave me a pet German Shepherd puppy, and I fell in love. That's the end of story. And uh, <clears throat> the, problem, par, par, the, the, the sad thing was that uh, the, the landlords came by and said, Hey, we hear you have a dog there. you got to get that dog out of there. You can't have a dog in there. We don't allow pets. Well, instead of, you know giving the dog back and letting it go, I thought, well, wait a minute, maybe I can get a neighbor to watch it for me and I'll take care of it, but they can just keep it at their house. So I went all over the neighborhood saying, hey, would you keep this dog for me so I could have this dog, blah, 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 blah. And then I found some property and I thought, well, I'll build a fence and I'll just put the dog in the fence and it'll be fine. And it didn't work. So eventually I gave the dog back. Heartbroken, yes. Again, an altered sense of reality. But there's good things to be said for having an altered sense of reality because I think it, it does allow you to dream. It allows you <clears throat> to think of things that maybe you wouldn't normally think of as being possibilities. I like to think the word hope means horizon of possibilities envisioned. you got to have hope. Um, <clears throat> even if things seem uh, like they're stacked against you, uh, I think people, I think most people, they do cling to hope. And I think that sometimes we find ourselves <clears throat> struggling with maybe our altered sense of our own personal realities and then superimposing that on the reality that, that we find ourselves in in real life. Sometimes, again, it, it can work. Again, I think that's where great changes come about is people begin to believe that, hey, things can be different. But you got to work for them. I saw an interesting uh, YouTube video about a high school teacher giving a commencement speech at this high school yesterday or maybe last week, I don't know. And basically, he said, hey, you know what? You need to basically know that you're not special. Now, <clears throat> in our day and age, or at least in the last 10 years, at least, or at least 20 years, I'd even say 30 years, really, you know, there's been a big movement to, you know, try to help kids find their self-esteem. 
But he, he made a point. He says, as everybody gets trophies, then trophies are meaningless. You know, we've, uh, we grew up with Mr. Rogers and Barney the Purple Dinosaur telling us that we're wonderful and we're special and that we're unique. And, and to a certain extent, yeah, every human being is a unique creation. But what this guy was saying is, you can't just sit around and say, well, I'm special, you know, mm, 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 you know, world come and love me. You know, if you want uh, esteem, go out and do esteemable things. You know, if you want uh, to be uh, recognized for your accomplishments, go out and accomplish something. <laughs> but the guy went on to say, you don't, but you don't do it just to get the accolades or the trophies or the awards. You do it because you love the work. And that's so important. You know, I think it's uh, interesting that we have a lot of, in our pipe community, guys who actually do some pretty awesome things. Whether they're making their own pipes, or they're traveling to other parts of the world. Dagners! <laughs> I'm talking about you. I mean, you know, who would have thunk it? You know, they, we're going to go to Holland, we're going to go to England, we're going to go to Europe. You know, the Dagners invade Europe. They'll never, Europe will never be the same ever again. Actually, they're part of an advanced landing force. Um, but anyway, but, you know, again, um, but the problem comes is when you have to begin to realize, okay, my altered sense of reality is not somehow working, or it's, it is really, uh, impractical and it's unrealistic. There comes a point where you have to, you have to accept that. And, you know, we have, we can have, we can superimpose an unsense, uh, an unrealistic, uh, sense of reality, an altered sense of reality on just about anything, whether it's, you know, hobbies, you know, whether it's pets, it's, uh, you know, diets, you know, a lot of people, you know, they, they, they start to diet and think that they're going to lose all this weight and it's going to make them 20 years younger and better looking. Chances, that's not going to happen. You might, you know, sure, you might look a little bit better, but, and you may feel a lot better, but they have unrealistic expectations. <clears throat> but at the same time, they have some sense of hope that this is going to turn uh, a page for them in their lives. And so, you, you know, again, it's that, it's that delicate balance of saying, okay, this is what I want, you know, and this is, what, this is the way life is, you know. And sometimes you, you, you have to really cut that with a very thin, sharp, extra sharp scalpel to, to really see, okay, what is really possible here. And uh, sometimes, you know, you can uh, do some great things, you know, crazy ideas, you know. <laughs> you know, irrational people are the people that change the world, they say. So, I just wanted to throw that out there. It's a, a thought that's been percolating in my old brain housing group today, this morning. Beautiful Saturday morning. You probably hear the chimes, and uh, it's just been a it's just been a really peaceful morning. Went for a walk, and uh, getting ready for the afternoon evening mass. And so, thank you for watching. And again, uh, in closing, I want to just reiterate that uh, my favorite pipe is my Bari pipe, the one I would take with me if I could have no other pipe, and uh, Holland House uh, pipe tobacco. Okay. So Dunhill Man, uh, UK, thanks for asking the question. And this was my answer to your question. Talk to you soon. Bye-bye.